right, let's talk a little bit about your foundation. Tell us a little bit about it. What should we know? Well, yeah, you know that, first off, I was born in an abusive to an abusive household. My dad abused my mom, never, never me. And really, to fast forward, I, I had some feelings from, from his, and he was a New York City policeman. Uh, and he brought a lot of fear on this home. I'm the youngest of five children, and I was a nervous kid. And, you know, I thought that that's the way I was born. I didn't realize what he was doing until later on, what he was doing and the fear that he brought to that home created these feelings. And once I, I realized that, uh, that that was the case, uh, when we went to New York, my wife Allie and I, uh, to, uh, you know, manage the Yankees, uh, she says, what charity do you want to get involved in? I said, how about domestic violence, which sort of stunned her because I never really talked a great deal about my growing up. Uh, so we decided uh, to start a charity with, with uh, called Safe at Home. Uh, and she, it was actually Allie's idea to do it through education. So if we're going to end the cycle or do our best to end the cycle of domestic violence, we're going to do it through education, which means uh, we're not putting a Band-Aid on something. We're, you know, hopefully help young people, and we have safe rooms in schools. We have master's level counselors in those safe rooms. My mom, who was really the, the target of all the abuse in my home growing up, uh, we named the rooms after her, Margaret's Place. And, you know, right now, uh, you know, we've, we've had better than 75,000 kids come through our program. We know it works. We, we let them know it's not their fault and they're not the only ones. They're not alone. And uh, we want to make them, uh, help them feel good about themselves. We give them the tools to deal with, with what's going on in their lives. What are those tools? How do you help somebody deal with that and grow up with that? Because I know that a child, when they experience that, they have two options. They can either learn from it and become better, or they can learn that behavior. Well, Madison, you hit it because, you know, when I saw what my dad was doing, uh, I didn't want to be that way. Right. I didn't want to be that way. You know, the tools basically, you know, you, we don't necessarily solve things. We just want these kids to understand that uh, it's not them. Because uh, I thought it was my fault, what was going on in the house. Because my older siblings were whispering all the time. And meanwhile, they were trying to protect me. But I thought I did something wrong. And I thought that I caused my dad to get angry with my mom. Uh, it's really weird how young people, you know, what goes through their minds. It's and thing. Uh, Really. And so uh, we, we make it very emphatic with these kids. It's, it's not their fault. They're not alone, so you can talk about it, because I never talked about it. My friends in the neighborhood, when we started our foundation, were shocked about this whole thing, because I never shared. And, uh, you know, awareness is, is a big deterrent to what, what's going on here. So, and, and we let them know how to deal. You know, call a close relative if something's going on, you feel it's getting out of control. So, uh, as I say, we know it works. We know it works. We're... Uh, you know, we've had we've had kids like this event tonight. We have one in New York. Uh, these young people who go through Margaret's place uh, talk about it, and, and and we we you know it's strictly confidential. We don't ask them to talk about it. They want to talk about it. Sort of like when I wanted to start this foundation, uh, where I wouldn't share before, but um, you know we're very proud of the work. It's still it's still an issue that people are reluctant to talk about. What do you think your mom would say if she knew that you had this whole foundation in her honor? Uh, you know, I think she probably, uh, once you explained it to her, but she was a very private person. She would never, if she was still with us, she would have been, uh, I, I would have had a tough time starting it because she would not have been happy with that. Um, and then, you know, of course, my dad, they've both been gone. Uh, my dad died in, in 71, my mom in 74. Uh, but the, the only thing I wish was a little different, that I had a chance to confront my father, which I, I never did. I was just curious what would have, you know, what was he thinking? What words would you have said? Well, you know, wh why did you bring so much fear? Why were you such a bully? Because uh, he wasn't a drinker, so you know he couldn't blame it on. Well, I had too much to drink. That wasn't the case. He was just an out-and-out -out bully. And uh, when my older brother Frank uh, asked him to get out of the house, he got out of the house. That's, that's another sign of a bully backing down. 
Now, how does baseball play into all of this? Well, I had a place to hide. I had a place to hide. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I could see myself uh, as someone with low self-esteem as a kid. You know, following somebody with the strongest personality, uh, and baseball has taught me a lot of uh, a lot of the rules of the road. It's a game of life for me. You know, you play it every day, and you have to deal with people. It's a face-to-face. And, and uh, you know, I had the ability to play, which gave me a place to, uh, to go and forget about what was going on in the real world. Awesome. Last question. It's a little side note. You are one of the greatest managers in history, and a lot of people would love to give you an award for that. Let's say somebody were to steal that award. How would you react? Ha- steal the award? Yeah. Well... <clears throat> you know what? Awards are great, just like World Series rings are great. Uh, but it's more what it represents than the actual ring. I realize that. I wanted a World Series ring in the worst way because my older brother Frank, who played for Milwaukee back in the, in the 50s when they beat the Yankees, he had a World Series ring, and that's always been my goal. And then when you get it, you realize it, it represents something. It's not the fact that you have it, it's what, it's what you accomplish to get it. So basically you're letting me know that I can have your World Series ring. That's right, but I didn't bring it with me. This is my Hall of Fame ring. See, you're out of luck tonight. I missed out, you guys. I missed out. Thank you so much. All right, man. Do you mind if I-